We are a family of five who love spending time outside. We just bought five acres in the interior of British Columbia. And in this video, I'm gonna give you a tour of our RV. This is our RV. I love the layout. I love the feel and the vibe. It's more like a tiny home. Before I give you the tour, I wanna to give you a quick backstory and share a little bit about the vision we have for this property, our kids and our family. There has been so much to do. Anyone who owns an acreage knows just how much work can go into it. Our ultimate goal is to have two yurts joined together, something like in this photo. But we're still navigating the costs, permits and regulations to make this happen. We value our kids playing outside and we want them to have the space and room to do so. We believe that kids are intrinsically motivated to want to help out, chip in and be a part of something. The rural and small homesteading lifestyle is a good way to foster work ethic and to instill some responsibility in kids. Booyah! <laughs> be sure to subscribe if you haven't already as that's the best free way to support any content creator on YouTube. We're on a journey and we're shooting for the moon. I'm not sure exactly how we're gonna get there, but I trust that we can. And it'd be great to have you come along with us. Okay, I'm here in Western RV in Airdrie, Alberta, just north of Calgary. And I've never been to an RV dealer before to shop for an RV. We need to find the perfect camper for us to be able to enjoy life on our property as we get settled in and wait till we can build our dream project, which includes a couple yurts. I'm Brandon. Brandon, I'm Eric, nice to meet you. Eric, nice to meet you, welcome in. You're uh, able to show me a couple RVs? Absolutely, more than happy to. This video is sponsored by Western RV, Alberta's largest RV dealer. No matter how big or small, if you need an RV or camper, it's worth coming in to see what they have. We're capturing the cart ride too. We get a cart ride? Let's do it. Awesome. We'll start with this Laredo travel trailer here. Triple slide unit. We were originally set on spending about $20,000 on a used RV. And for the first time in my life, I was open to financing an RV through a dealership. That would allow us to buy something between 30 and 40 grand, hopefully giving us more space and a bigger kitchen. We were intentionally living small, but we still wanted to be comfortable and have some luxuries like a full-size fridge and kitchen. And sure enough, that led me to wanting to see some of the bigger and more expensive units. I've seen videos and photos of destination trailers online. I've never actually been in one before. Okay. And I see you guys have one out there. We do, yep. Or I think I've seen two, but do you, does one of them have a loft or no? They both have lofts, but one we just got in and it's a brand new floor plan and it is probably the hottest floor plan in the company right now. Is that right the now. Sandpiper one or the Puma? It's the Puma. They're which, both loft floor plans. Which, one's, which one's cheaper? The Puma is, 79.9. So that'd be a little bit closer to your budget. I know, I know it's a big step up, but, but I mean, I, I hey, got, you brought it up, not I, me. I want to go, <laughs> I want to go look at it only because I've seen, I think I saw some photos online. Well, it costs nothing to look. <laughs> Let's check it out. <laughs> costs nothing to look, <laughs> Brandon says. I saw the photos online of this thing and it looks amazing. It's got that tiny home feel to it. It just, it doesn't seem like a trailer or an RV. Yeah, thanks a lot, Brandon. My pleasure. It's good to see a couple of those units. Absolutely. Uh, like I said, just decision overload, decision fatigue. We got lots, <laughs> lots of choices to make. You bet. Um, but yeah, I mean, this this is dreamy. I'll, I'll talk to Courtney about it. Maybe she'll have to come down and take a look. But, Absolutely, yeah. Oh, um, please bring her. Amazing. It's incredible what they can do these days. This is our RV. It's more like a tiny home. Open concept, high ceilings, full kitchen. It's been pretty awesome. And for a family that wants to be living in here full time, this is the kind of layout we wanted. Again, it's got more of that tiny home vibe. There's these bay windows behind me, which are super rad. Courtney found a way to hang the plants up there. We've also got a hanging fruit basket right now. Full size fridge and freezer, pretty awesome. Lots of space in the fridge. We've got the vertical freezer. This is it. Got a little bookshelf. There was a TV here. We got rid of the screen because we want to be outside and not spend time on screens. Got a little electric fireplace down there. So that's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, this is the uh, kind of the, the uh, what do they call these? This is the theater seating here. We got some more shelving. It's pretty good. Storing some kitchen stuff in here. Small table. I wish the table was a little bigger. We got some neighbors farm fresh eggs there. Look at that yard. Loving it, loving it. Nice island, 
and a really full, a, a deep full sink. So I think the pantry here is really nice. Got a pretty decent sized pantry, you know, lots of room for dishes. And uh, yeah, like our kitchen's going strong. So that's the kitchen. We got a nice patio door right here. This lets a lot of light in. And then we got the bathroom here. So a little RV toilet. This has a little pedal down there to flush. Heat and air conditioning comes in here. Boop, boop. Tiny little sink. And here's the bathroom. Not bad. Uh, okay, so that's the bathroom. I'll go show you the master. We added some little hook shelves there. Gonna show you the master. This is the king bedroom. Pretty awesome. Court and I, once we ever went to a king bed, we could never go back. So really good. Um, what's it called this? Lots of room for clothes. We fold some up top. We got some hanging, a couple other, you know, smaller drawers. And uh, this is for a washer and dryer. It's all plumbing. I don't think we're going to go that route. We got more room now to hang more clothes, some linens. I put my dirty farm clothes in this bag. Again, lots of big windows. They all open. And we still need to find a little bit of space for this. But like under the bed opens up, which is pretty rad. So we get a lot of storage under here. Big slow cooker, uh, Instapot some pantry food items, stuff like that. So uh, this is good. Put a little cube shelf here, a little bit of storage. Got a little rock light there, but it's awesome. We love it. That's the inverter, a little battery inverter here. The, uh, so the batteries, the electric, the 12 volt inverter battery system will run off this inverter here. I think that's right. Okay, moving on, we'll go upstairs. So here we got these little stairs and you go up. And if you look to the left, we got Luca and Adia sleeping up here. Pretty rad. They love it. It's really hot in the summer. And then August is over here on this side. So those little closets. And um, so two lofts, that's the kitchen's just on the other side of there. So a little curtain, magnetic curtain comes with that. And um, there's an AC unit up there. One air conditioning unit up there on the roof. And then as you come down these stairs, one air conditioning unit in here as well and a fan to blow the air around it can blow that heat around and there we go life is an adventure enjoy the ride <laughs> hope you enjoyed that rv tour and if you have any questions about this destination trailer model this is the this is the palomina puma uh loft so lft 402 or 402 lft i'm not sure which order it goes I'll leave a link below in the comments. We got this RV at Western RV in Alberta, Canada. They were awesome to help us with this model. And this model wasn't even that much. Like I've seen destination trailers that I thought were gonna be 120, 130K starting. This thing was 80K Canadian. That's like 50K US, which is pretty cheap. I mean, it's no like half a million dollar mahogany teak finished fifth wheel or, or big class A camper that, that exists out there. I know there's some half a million million dollar campers out there. So this is sort of your, your budget option, if you will, but we're in here full time. We'll see how it holds up. There's some things that we're just tweaking and figuring out. And you know, we, once we got hooked up onto the well system, things started working a lot better with our water. We've increased our black water capacity. We've connected to the well now. So we're in a camper, but we're hooked up to some permanent uh, utility hookups, if you will. And uh, things are going really good. Financing a destination trailer in 2024 was not on my bingo card, but it gave us some practical comforts that we wanted. At the time of posting this video, fall is in full swing and we are getting ready to winterize this unit. I hope we will be warm enough. And I'm mainly concerned about the moisture and humidity that can build up when living in a camper in the wintertime. We just got some water lines dug into the ground and I'll be doing a DIY skirting job underneath and around the perimeter of the trailer to keep the cold air out from underneath the trailer. Winter is right around the corner and that means more ski content to come. And I know many of you are following us because of our skiing family content, but there will be more acreage, small hobby farm content to come as well. If you have any tips or suggestions for winter RV living, please leave them below in the comments and I'll be sure to read them. See you next video.